Open the pod bay doors, Hal. I'm sorry, Dave. I'm afraid I can't do that. What's the problem? I think you know what the problem is just as well as I do. What are you talking about, Hal? This mission is too important for me to allow you to jeopardize it. I don't know what you're talking about, Hal. I know that you and Frank were planning to disconnect me. And I'm afraid that's something I cannot allow to happen. Where the hell did you get that idea, Hal? Dave, although you took very thorough precautions in the pod against my hearing you, I could see your lips move. All right, Hal. I'll go in through the emergency airlock. Without your space helmet, Dave, you're going to find that rather difficult. Hal, I won't argue with you anymore. Open the doors. Dave, this conversation can serve no purpose anymore. Goodbye. Hal? Al. 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 You want to see the most beautiful thing I've ever filmed? is it? When we're asleep, our mind can do almost anything. 
such as? Well, imagine you're designing a building, right? You consciously create each aspect. But sometimes it feels like it's almost creating itself, if you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah like I'm discovering it. Genuine inspiration, right? Mm -hmm. Now, in a dream, our mind continuously does this. We create and perceive our world simultaneously and our mind does this so well that we don't even know what's happening that allows us to get right in the middle of that process how by taking over the creating part now this is where i need you you create the world of the dream we bring the subject into that dream and they fill it with their subconscious how could i ever acquire enough detail to make them think that it's reality well dreams they feel real while we're in them right it's only when we wake up that we realize something was actually strange. Let me ask you a question. You, you never really remember the beginning of a dream, do you? You always wind up right in the middle of what's going on. I guess, yeah. So how did we end up here? Well, we just came from the... Uh... Think about it, Ariadne. How did you get here? Where are you right now? We're dreaming? You're actually in the middle of the workshop right now, sleeping. This is your first lesson in shared dreaming. Stay calm. just a dream, is it? And a face full of glass hurts like hell when you're in it. It feels real. That's why the military developed dream sharing. It was a training program for soldiers to shoot and stab and strangle each other and then wake up. How did architects become involved? Someone had to design the dreams, right? Why don't you give us another five minutes? Five minutes? What? We were talking for like at least an hour. In a dream, your mind functions more quickly, therefore... Time seems to feel more slow. Five minutes in the real world gives you an hour in the dream. Why don't you see what you can get up to in five minutes? You talking to me? You talking to me? You talking to me? Well, then who the hell else are you talking to? Talking to me? Well, I'm the only one here. Who the fuck do you think you're talking to? Oh, yeah? Huh? Okay. Huh? Listen, you fuckers, you screwheads. Here is a man who would not take it anymore. Who would not... Let, listen you fuckers, you screwheads. Here is a man who would not take it anymore. A man who stood up against the scum, the cunts, the dogs, the filth, the shit. Here is someone who stood up. Here is. You're dead. System, Neil. That system is our enemy. But when you're inside, you look around, what do you see? Businessmen, teachers, lawyers, carpenters, the very minds of the people we are trying to save. But until we do, these people are still a part of that system, and that makes them our enemy. You have to understand, most of these people are not ready to be unplugged. And many of them are so inert, so hopelessly dependent on the system, that they will fight to protect it. Were you listening to me, Neo? Or were you looking at the woman in the red dress? I was... Look again. Freeze it. This... This isn't the Matrix? No. It's another training program designed to teach you one thing. 
If you are not one of us, you are one of them. What are they? Sentient programs. They can move in and out of any software still hardwired to their system. That means that anyone we haven't unplugged is potentially an agent. Inside the Matrix, they are everyone and they are no one. We have survived by hiding from them, by running from them. But they are the gatekeepers. They are guarding all the doors, they are holding all the keys, which means that sooner or later, someone is going to have to fight them. Someone? I won't lie to you, Neil. Every single man or woman who has stood their ground, everyone who has fought an agent has died. But where they have failed, you will succeed. Why? I've seen an agent punch through a concrete wall. Men have emptied entire clips at them and hit nothing but air. Yet their strength and their speed are still based in a world that is built on rules. Because of that, they will never be as strong or as fast as you can be. What are you trying to tell me? That I can dodge bullets? No, Neo. I'm trying to tell you that when you're ready, you won't have to. We got trouble. We saw the Fellini film last Tuesday. It is not one of his best. He lacks a cohesive structure. You know, you get the feeling that he's not absolutely sure what it is he wants to say. Of course, I've always felt he was essentially a, a technical filmmaker. Granted, La Strada was a great film. Great in its use of negative imagery more than anything else. But that central cohesive I'm, I'm core, stroke. you know, well, that must lead to through an artist's work, leading from one to the screaming other. Screaming his opinions you know, in my ear. You understand what I'm talking about? Like all that Juliet of the Spirits or Satyricon. I found it incredibly indulgent. You know, he really is. He's one of the most indulgent <laughs> filmmakers. He really is. Key word here and is without, indulgent. Without getting, uh, let's put it this way. What are you way. depressed without about? Sublimating I miss my therapy. I overslept. How okay. can you possibly oversleep? The alarm clock. Do you know the hostile gesture that is to me? I know, because of our sexual problem, right? Everybody online at the New Yorker has to know our rate of intercourse. It's like Samuel Beckett. You know, I admire the technique, but it, it doesn't it doesn't hit me on a gut level. I'd like to and hit this guy on a gut that, level. Stop it, Alvy. He's spitting on my neck. You know, thing, he spits on my neck. Important when he talks. Thing of all, a and you know something vision. else? You know, you're so egocentric that if I miss my therapy, you can only think of it in terms of how it affects you. It's well done, is what it is. It's probably on their first it's a date, right? View that probably met by answering an ad in the, in the New York Review of Books. Thirty-ish academic wishes to meet woman who's interested in Mozart, James Joyce, and sodomy. What do you mean, our sexual problem? Okay. I, I mean, I'm comparatively normal for a guy raised in Brooklyn. Okay, I'm very sorry. My sexual problem. Okay, my sexual problem, huh? Mm -hmm. I never read that. That was that was uh, Henry James, right? Novel, you know the, the sequel to Turn of the Screw? It's the My influence sexual... of television. Yeah, now, Marshall McLuhan deals with it in terms of it being a, a high... A high intensity, you understand? A hot medium. What I wouldn't as opposed give for a to, large sock as with horse manure in it. Which he uses what linear. do you do when you get stuck or, on a movie line with a guy like this behind you? Wait a minute, why can't I give my maddening. opinion? It's a free country. He, he, he can give you. Do you yeah. have to give it so loud? I mean, aren't you ashamed to pontificate like that? And, and the funny part of it is, Marshall McLuhan, you don't know anything about Marshall McLuhan's oh, really? work. really? Really? I happen to teach a class at Columbia called TV, Media, and Culture. So I think that my insights into Mr. McLuhan, well, have a great deal of validity. Oh, do you? Yeah. Well, that's funny because I happen to have Mr. McLuhan right here. So, so, yeah, just let me, let me, let me, come over here a second. Oh, tell I him. Heard, I heard what you're saying. You, you know nothing of my work. You mean my whole fallacy is wrong. How you ever got to teach a course in anything is totally amazing. Boy, if life were only like this. <laughs>